morning. I'm Robin Zukoski, and I'm both uh, technology challenged and time challenged. So. Good luck to us all as we go through this. Uh, before we I really get started on describing the bill, um, I want to just make a personal thank you to everyone in this room who answered the call from the people working in Olympia uh, about contacting their legislators and the governor's office about the importance of this program. Uh, you have no idea what different, what a difference uh, those calls and letters uh, make on, on any topic, but certainly made on this topic. And there were just so many times in the session when we needed people to speak up, and I think the people in this room did speak up, and all of their friends spoke up, and it really made a difference, and I and everyone else who was trying to get this uh, passed on through are very uh, grateful. Um, now, the other thing, uh, there's this discussion, it's a mixed bag, there's some good things in this bill, and there's a very um, difficult uh, time limit, but I do wanna say that uh, in this very difficult budget year, um, this program uh, was allotted 40 million new dollars, new dollars. Um, and the cost of the price, in my mind, of getting that infusion of money to keep the program going till the end of the biennium was uh, imposing this time limit. And uh, as in all political processes, there are uh, compromises, and this is the one um, that was made, but certainly without that additional funding, we would be in a world of hurt and facing grant cuts and, you know, a, a different list of horrors. And so, um, overall, I definitely put this uh, in the victory uh, column for this uh, population, but it's not going to feel that way on the 1st of September to the people who are most directly affected. Uh, so, I I did want to say that 2782 is actually the Security Lifeline Act, and it did a couple of other things besides create the Disability Lifeline Program. That's not the focus of our discussion today, but if anybody has any questions about the Opportunity Portal or the Basic Food Employment Opportunity and Training Program, um, I know that Representative Dickerson and I and probably others in this room would be happy to answer those questions, but we're really just going to focus on um, the DL. Uh, so, as Representative Dickerson said, the, the first thing, and I think really in the long term, one of the most significant things about this is that uh, the name of the program has been changed. And so now when there are editorials and letters to the editors and discussions and budget descriptions, uh, people will at least have a clue what the program is about and what population it is aimed at uh, when people are talking about eliminating it. And uh, you know, messaging is everything, and so I, this is a really a positive change. We've talked for many years about changing the name, and this was our opportunity to do it. Uh, the time limits, uh, as I said, were a compromise, and I'm going to go into more detail about them in a minute. Um, something that I think people should remember, though, is that they do, under the current legislation, they sunset uh, in 2013, and so uh, faint hope, although that is, the time limits will are currently slated to end uh, in three years. Uh, the bill also uh, requires the participation in chemical dependency treatment and vocational rehabilitation uh, programs when it's determined that that would help, uh, when it's appropriate and would help uh, people who are temporarily disabled return to work. Um, it establishes an early SSI transition project, which is something that I think will, um, we're very, very hopeful, will move people onto SSI and Medicaid, which as you know is a much richer and better program for this clientele in a much faster way, um, as well as uh, moving them uh, from the state budget to the federal budget, which is always the state legislature's goal. Um, and then there is the housing voucher program, and unfortunately, I think I'm not going to be able to provide the kind of information that you all are looking for about that today because it's still um, very undefined. Okay, 24 months in a 60-month period, and it's being applied retroactively. So people who have been on and off and on and off and on and off in the last five years, those months could be added up to equal 24, even though they haven't been on 24 months continuously. So I think that that's an important thing for providers to remember because um, I think some of this clientele may not remember that they were on GAU for five months, five years ago, um, and may think that this uh, time limit is not going to apply to them as speedily as perhaps um, it is going to. Now, there are um, some exceptions 
And uh, I was explaining to some legislators recently that really they have no idea how hard it is to count 24 months. <laughs> it sounds like an easy thing, but because the months on the X program and on these other smaller categories of the general assistance program uh, don't count, you have to look back at the records and the computer coding and you have to add things up and was it in five years? And it's, it's just really not as straightforward as uh, you would immediately think. And that's one of the reasons why there's been such a variety of estimates about the number of people affected by this program. The, the other thing is that uh, it depends if you're looking at the number of people who get the program in a month or in a year. In any given month in our state, 20,000 people are receiving GAU benefits. Uh, but unduplicated count through a biennium, it's 72,000 people because it is a temporary assistance program. And so it, it you know, 72 is a lot more than 20. It really impacts a lot of people, this program and all of these um, changes. Uh, so, and, and uh, our, our, our safeguard here or our fail safe um, is that as Representative Dickerson said, every DSHS is reviewing um, all of the cases that have been on for a sustained period of time to see if they might be eligible for the expedited uh, program. And uh, the good news is that 40% of them are moving. That's good news uh, for the clients because they'll get Medicaid instead of uh, medical care services and they won't be affected by the time limit. And so uh, that's like win-win um, all the way around. Although reviewing all of those cases uh, since the end of the legislative session and before this bill went into effect, I think has been a huge challenge um, to the agency. Uh, now, one thing that we just heard yesterday, um, which isn't, I think, that big 